Kan shalom. All praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to the hopeful elect is pushing his truth and sincerity. So, this is going to be another John to Psalm Days Breakdowns, episode 63. We're going to jump into Psalms 113. The Lord exalts the humble. It says, Praise ye the Lord Jehovah. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord Jehovah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, again, stressing out many a times the importance of knowing the names of the Heavenly Father Yahweh and the name of His beloved Son Yahweh Shai and we, when we call in order to reach the Heavenly Father we have to go to the Redeemer who is the mediator the middleman, the connector between us upon this earth and the Most High that's why we say Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai it says here, God pleasing sacrifices, Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. To his name. See, so we give, we give thanks, we give thanks and praise. These are the sacrifices, the sacrifices which we make towards the Most High. It says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifice, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is well pleased. So we got to be in the spirit of doing good and being in, being in holy communication continually. That is well pleasing unto the Most High. Verse 2. Blessed be the name of Yahweh from this time forth, even forevermore. So in the past, in the present, and in the near future, we have to keep praising Yahweh Bashim Yashai. And many might get into a spirit of thinking like, not important you know we want to use we want to use the title God we want to say we want to keep saying Jesus or just go into into different names like uh, Yeshaya, Ahaya, uh, Yahweh, Yeshua but the true name in the Lashem and Kadash and we said it and we say it again is Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai Yahweh referring to the Most High Ba'asham in the name, and Yahusha is, the, is, is the, the name of the beloved son. So it says in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name uh, on the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So the name is given unto us. You know, when you, when you go into a Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah 13, yeah, it says Zechariah 13 verse 9 and I will bring the third part to the fire and I will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and I will hear them I will say it is my people the children of Israel and they shall say the Lord Jehovah is my power so the Lord will the Lord would he already appointed he would manifest his name unto us how can we call upon him how can we call upon his name if his name is not given unto us so it says here let's jump to the book of uh, philippians 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in mashiach Yahushai. so he is which means he is our example we got to be like-minded how the redeemer was upon this earth in um in uh, restrainment, in self-control, in dedication, you know, in uprightness, in being, in being, uh, in being an example of light, you know, performed in 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 our bodies on this earth. That is what we need to be continually. It says, "Who being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him." the form of a servant that was made in the likeness of man that means he humbled himself it says and being found in the fashion as man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross which is talking about the sacrifice it says wherefore the most high also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name which is the name of course it's his name is not above the name of Yahweh, you know because everything everything is established in order but it's his name is above every any name uh on this earth 
because that's he is the beloved son of the most high it says in the book of first corinthians 11 verse 3 but i would have you known that the head of every man is the Mashiach, the Mashiach, so the redeemer so the head of every man that is called into this ministry to walk in his example his head is the redeemer who the people call jesus christ his name is Yahweh Shai. and the head of the woman is the man so the the head of the woman is the man the woman need to follow the man a righteous man that is and the head of the Mashiach of the Redeemer is the Most High so that's the order so you have the Heavenly Father then you have the Redeemer then you have you have the angels and then you have the righteous men of the Lord that are doing the will of the Most High so it says wherefore the Most High also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name above all names on this earth you know the second the second highest name is is the name of the redeemer that is the name of yahweh shai every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth yeah because he is he is the second highest in command so all all the hosts all the army all that all that bows down and respects the most high has respect towards the sun it says and that the, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is the Lord, to glory of the Most High, the Father. So that's the order, the established order that needs to be kept in respect. Uh, verse three. It says, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Yeah, man. You know, the greater light and the lesser light. Was it in Genesis? So that means the sun will continually go up and go down. You know, because the earth, the earth abided forever. Let's get that first. The book of Ecclesiastes. The earth abides forever. So the sun will continually go up and go down. The book of Ecclesiastes 1 verse 4, it says one generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The planet earth sticks around forever. You know, people pass away and another generation comes, um, is coming back upon this earth. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, and the Most High, the Most High made two great lights. The great light to rule the, lit, to, to rule the day, which is talking about the sun. And the last light to rule the night, which is talking about the moon. He made the stars also. You know? So the Heavenly Father created all these things. The great light, um, the lesser light, but also uh, but also uh, the stars which are in heaven. And the scripture said, let's go to Jeremiah 31. You know, the Lord, the Lord would only put away the children of Israel if these things would stop existing you know these ordinances would stop uh, being of existence which never is going to take place these things are set forever let me see where it is here, here it is in Jeremiah 31 verse 35 thus say the Lord Jehovah which give it the sun for a light by day and the ordinance of the moon and the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves that were roar. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of army, of armies is his name. Yeah, because the Lord is a man of war. You know, Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord is a man of war. He is the one who is steering World War III to manifest upon this earth. You know, even the war in heaven existing out of uh, Archangel Michael, the Redeemer, the angels fighting against Esau, Edom, with their with their fighting uh, tanks and their minions, in hope to trying to destroy the Redeemer, but they're gonna lose the battle. So it says, if those ordinances referring to the sun, the moon, the stars, if those ordinances depart from before me, say the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So. When the sun and moon and the stars will, will no longer be in existence, that will be the day when the Lord will that will be the Lord when the Lord that will be the day when the Lord will cast away the children of Israel, which ain't going which ain't gonna happen. It says, Thus said the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, 
and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seeds of Israel for all that they have done, said the Lord. So if you can, if you can, if you can measure the earth, <coughs> if you can find out the things which, which are unsearchable, you know, let's get this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 3. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of the kings is unsearchable. So the Lord is the Lord is actually is actually mocking and joking with, with anyone who's trying to search out these things, which Esau is continually trying to do, in the hope that he will find it out and so that we will be cast away. But the Lord is letting you know those things are unsearchable. So you keep trying and you keep trying, but it's a futile uh, uh, attempt. It ain't gonna happen. You know, long story short, the Lord is never going to put the children of Israel to the side. Um, so it says in first, what is it? Verse 5. Who, who is like unto the Lord? Verse 5. In verse 4. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Yeah. There's a scripture which spoke about the Lord Jehovah in the highest. Somewhere, somewhere in the book of Luke, the Lord Jehovah in the highest. There's no, that's why the scripture and the title is also the most high. Nobody is equal unto the height of the most high. He is the highest, the highest. There's no, there's no force, no source that is equal and that can come near unto the most high. On his level. It says, who is like unto the Lord Jehovah, our power who dwelleth on high, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in this earth. Yeah. The Lord, the Lord, that's the, the, the way how the most I beholds everything is by the angels, man. It says in the book of Proverbs 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord Jehovah are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So the Lord is beholding everything by the way of the, by the way of the angels man that is how the lord is beholding everything so they they see and they report unto yahweh psalms chapter 11 verse 4 the lord yahweh is in his holy temple the lord's throne is in heaven his eyes behold his eyelids try the children of men so the lord the lord is, is is in his high holy habitation beholding everything and he is the one who's testing everybody upon this earth that's the lord who's doing that man and he is the one who lifts up man and also takes down man the book of james chapter 4 verse 10 Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. See, if you humble yourself like how the Lord, the Lord is humble. The Lord came riding upon an ass. What is it in Zechariah 9? And 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king, which is referring to who? To the Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Cometh unto thee, he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the fall of an ass the lord is lowly may go into the meaning of the word lowly strong's h 6041 ani ani poor afflicted humble wretched Oh, wretched, am, wretched man that I am, is what Paul said. Are we not wretched? You know? A humble and lowly. The Lord is looking upon those. And as we, as we, as we, Isaiah 66, as we in this estate strive to do the will of the Lord, the most have a look upon you. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, for all those things that my hand made, and all those things have been, said the Lord Jehovah. But to this man will I look, even to him that is of a poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth 
at my word. And that's what the Lord wants to see. He wants you to be of a lowly, regretful spirit who is trembling at the word, trembling at the word of the Most High. The Redeemer came into the volume of the book, so you tremble in the things that you do as you as you try to become as the Redeemer who is given unto us by the way of the word to walk in his way. You know? Verse 7, He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes even with the princes of his people. You see, so the Lord, the Lord can lift up and the Lord can take down. The Lord can raise you and the Lord can, the Lord can uh, abase you, you know. And throughout this whole ministry, the Lord, the Lord will do these things. Man, he will lift you up. He will take you down. And these are all trials of testing and checking at you what you're going to do. How you're going to abide. Are you going to keep doing the thing which is needful? Um, are you going to keep the integrity? The Lord, the Lord is doing all these things. He's testing. He's trying you. So, the book of Sirach, chapter 29, verse... Um, but he's also looking at your mind. You know, are you going to command people for their riches? Are you going to command people for their outward appearance? Are you going to look towards somebody because of the amount of riches or, or the, the estate that somebody is in? You know, all these all these things is what the Lord is looking at. In order to become uh, a complete appointed judge, you gotta you gotta learn to look with with um, with uh, um, how you say that in in English. In Dutch, we say an onpartijdige, onpartijdig. impartial. You know, with the imp with the impartial mind, and that is what that is what is being tested by being exposed onto 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 cases where you gotta judge righteously instead of having uh, a favor or or dealing with nepotism and all type of things. Thinking like, man, that money, that person has a lot of money, or that person is in a high position, so I'm gonna give a pass. No, man, the Lord, the Lord is not dealing with um, a respect of persons, so the Lord is gonna cause you to go to situations where where He is continually checking you, like, are you gonna do, are you gonna do the right thing, or are you gonna be partial in judgment? You know. So the book of. Uh, the book of Sirach 29 verse 1. He that is merciful will lend unto, the na unto his neighbors. And he that strengthened his hand keepeth the commandments. Lend to thy neighbor in the time of his need. And pay to thou neighbor again in due season. Keep thy word and deal faithfully with him. And thou shalt always find the thing that is necessary for thee. You see? And the Lord, the Lord is moved in compassion. When he saw, when he saw... Our people, for example, in an estate. When you saw our people in a state of, uh, oh, here is actually more of it. Let me jump to verse eight. Yet, have thou patience with the man in a poor estate, and delay not to show mercy. Help the poor for the commandment's sake, and turn him not away because of his poverty. The Lord, the Lord is going to cause things, and He does these things with 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 the trying of your your mind your way of being and if you don't show mercy in those things the lord will not show you that mercy when you will be in a needful situation man this this the mind the mind that is actually in esau you know the bible speaks about esau let me get this man i believe it is in the book of proverbs proverbs 22 Let's get this. Mm. 22 verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. You see? The humility and the fear of the Lord is gonna is gonna is gonna bring in all the rest that is that's that is needful. You know? But all is in balance. Let me see where it is. 22 in uh hmm. Twenty-two, 
It says, Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord Yahweh will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. You see, so the Lord, the Lord is the Lord is watching, man. The rich hate the poor like poverty. There is a scripture where it says, Poverty is evil, evil in the sight of of the rich. But you gotta understand that we're living in a system that is completely um, evaporating the middle class and is causing people to be either uh, um, filthy rich or you're just being poor. When we say poor, you're just getting by you, you're capable of paying your rent, paying your, 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 the things that you need to do your gas, your electricity, your water, you might have internet and TV, cable, you pay those things, your house bill, you're capable of buying food, you know, and you, some, you, you know, if you got some, you got some money to buy and to spend things, you can, you can pay for, for, um, of course, you can pay for clothing, um, you can pay for herbs, you know, you can, you can treat yourself on, on things like going to the movie or going to, going to a theme park or or you know a zoo with your kids you know all those things that's what the lord the lord uh um can grant you most likely will grant you but to have the amount of money to to continually go on a vacation go to this country go to that country you know that is not what the lord um the Lord can 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 grant it you, but the Lord is not going to grant it onto everybody in a way. Like, okay, now you can go to, you can visit Japan. You know, now this this summer coming, and you can go to, uh, you can go to uh, Jamaica. You know, this is captivity. So the Lord will keep you in a state of actually being pressed, which is causing you continually to move and to stay occupied, to stay busy. But Esau, Esau's mind is not about caring. Esau is, is pressing people in this estate where people are starting to stress to the point where people commit suicide. And Esau feels no form of guilt in pushing people to this estate. But the Lord, the Lord moves us in a mind state to be full of compassion and caring about our people, man. That's why we push the word of the Most High. You know, we're bringing them back, we're quickening them, we're teaching them the ways of the Lord. And be guiding them in in the discipline of the most high and the discipline of the most high stretches forth from walking in his way from studying from from feeding or in this truth and feeding our brothers and sisters but also doing whatever it takes to make sure that you don't drown in uh the oppressive tactics of the devil you know you have to take care of yourself at all times especially if you have a household man so hey this is what i quickly wanted to bring out man i believe this was done oh no it's not done it says here uh, it says that he may set uh, him with princes even with the princes of his of his people yeah man the lord the lord can lift you up man first nine he make it the barren women to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children praise ye the lord yeah man where is it in first Samuel? First Samuel two. Verse five. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren, the childless woman, had borne seven. You know? And the Lord the Lord can the Lord can can steer can steer a childless woman to become a, a, a big family man it says and she that had many children is wax feeble the lord kill it and make it alive and bring it down to the grave and bring it up the lord make it poor and make it rich he bring it low and lift it up that's what the lord can do man and the lord can do it in ways with which you wouldn't expect it man you know all of a sudden things things shift and People would look full of amazement when they will see how the Lord can lift one up and how the Lord can take one down from a high position. Down, down to the dust, man. He raised up the poor out of the dust and he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them to inherit the throne of glory. 
kingdom to come. That is what the Lord did with us, man. You know, having not chosen the poor in this world, rich in faith, out of this estate of being the dry bones, not understanding who we are, not truly understanding how we have been offending the Most High continually, striving for things uh, which were con contrary unto the will of the Most High. The Lord quickened us and He pulled us out of this estate, out of that estate into this estate, understanding who we are, you know, being filled with the faith of the Heavenly Father, the dedicated spirit of doing His will. There's no, there's no greater joy and blessing that the Lord can give you instead of being here and being, being, receiving a Sophia, receiving wisdom. Man. It says, for the pillars of the earth are the, are the Lord Shehawah, and he had set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints And the wicked, the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. So the Lord will be with us, man. And all our enemies are going to be crushed and destroyed when they dare to come up against us, man. It says, The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of the heaven, shall he thunder upon them. The Lord Jehovah shall judge, judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his kings. And we are a nation of kings and priests, man. And exalt the horn of his anointed. Going to who? And we have the anointed, Yahweh Shai. Then you have the anointed below that, which is talking about the mighty King David. But we are also, who are we? We are the anointed ones. You see, so we also, we also being exalted right now upon this earth and everything takes place in order, in hierarchy. You know, so all praises to Yahweh Shai Shalom.